The second African Business and Human Rights Forum held in Addis Ababa this year focused on For Africa from Africa. The three-day event in Africa Union headquarters had conferences and meetings organized by partners and included participants from all over Africa and international organizations. One of the events hosted was Action Aid led meetings on women's economic justice and corporate accountability in Africa and its implication in African continental free trade area and the UN binding treaty on business and human rights. Thank you very much for having me uh, just to say something about Action Aid. ActionAid is an international organization working in more than 46 countries globally and in 19 countries in, in, in Africa and in Ethiopia. ActionAid Ethiopia has been operating for more than 34 years since 1989. So in Ethiopia, ActionAid works to empower women, girls and make sure their rights are uh, achieved, they have a good working situations, and they are equal with uh, men and with the rest of the, the, the communities. In addition, we also have areas where we try to enhance their capacities around livelihood, around you know, good governance and civic engagement where they can influence the, the, the government. Regarding the human rights, we provide, you know, community awareness building, capacity building, you know, capacity building of the sector offices and the government offices where we increase their awareness about some binding treaties, global and national laws where we can, you know, improve the rights of uh, women. In addition to that, we do researches and uh, evidence generation and we use that uh, evidences and researches to do some advocacies at local, national and, and, and global level. So generally we are uh, doing a lot of things, uh, starting from you know, community mobilization, awareness creation, knowledge building, to you know, networking, supporting the government structures you know, to abide to national and international laws, and also you know, doing some advocacy based on evidences. As you have seen from the session, you know, there are a lot of discussions, a lot of issues, topics raised from different countries. So it's really a very important space where countries you know, learn, share experiences and where we can do some advocacies at you know, uh, regional and cross-regional levels where you know, different governments and countries adopt you know, more or less similar laws and they implement you know, the laws wherever they are. So as part of the, this effort, uh, ActionAid have been implementing uh, a project called you know, Combating Modern Slavery, where we mobilize communities, where we support the government, and where we do some advocacy you know, to make sure you know, uh, women, girls, and children have their rights. So the spaces are, you know, the, the forums are spaces where we can learn, we can share experiences, and we use these spaces you know, to do some advocacy at, at, at a different level. So it was really very important and we need to have similar spaces in the future. During the sessions, presenters from different countries in Africa shared their experience in their respective fields and projects, creating continent-wide conversations on women empowerment and labor laws with a special emphasis on African continental free trade area implementations. Here are some highlights from the presentations. By way of introduction, I just want to state that all workers are equal and should enjoy equal rights. So it doesn't matter the status a worker has. What is important is that that worker needs to be protected, no matter what. And out of this, female workers remain vulnerable and subjected to several forms of discrimination at work and also um, at home and in the labor market. So I say this because whilst women are looking for job, they are exposed to a lot of issues. When they are working, they are exposed to a lot of issues. And when, when they are out of work, they are still exposed to a lot of issues as well. And this doesn't matter whether you are working in the formal economy or informal economy. Once you are a woman, you're bound to face 
almost all the challenges that there is. So to ensure adequate protection for everyone, we need to stand up for every woman and fight their discrimination in all spheres. We need to ensure that women earn fairer wages and also are included in decision making for fairer participation. Then also we need to ensure that we fight for a better working condition for women as well. Working condition is important because sometimes we overemphasize on wages that when workers get living wages, they are fine. But we do forget that the conditions in which people are working matters as much as the money that they are earning because you wouldn't want someone to go to work and come back home with one arm because they got injured on the job because they didn't have adequate protection on the job as well. And finally, we need to ensure that workers, especially women workers, also enjoy trade union rights around the world. In conclusion, I would say that an equal future is a future where there are no barriers, where responsive systems and structures are instituted to support the emancipation of the marginalized and vulnerable groups, economically, socially, politically, and otherwise. Thank you. We believe voluntary measures are not enough to regulate uh, activities of transnational corporations. It is true that today three African countries have national action plans on business and human rights. What that means is that they've domesticated the UN guiding principles on business and human rights. Kenya, Uganda and Nigeria and about 15 other states are in the process of developing national action plans. And we welcome that progress because it's very important for us to domesticate the UNGPs according to our local context. But then it shouldn't be an end in itself. Our multinational corporations have a lot of power, especially the financial power, and our states are not adequately built to regulate the activities of transnational companies. All of us here have examples of corruption. If I chose any participant from West Africa, they would share with us the greatest corruption scheme that has happened in their country. It's the case with us in East Africa, it's equally the case in South Africa and the Southern African states. So because of the inadequate capacity of our government to regulate activities of transnational companies, we believe that the regulation in the legally binding instrument to regulate all activities of transnational companies under international human rights law will offer great protection to the people we serve, that is the communities that host the investments of these multinationals. People in Ghana grow cocoa, we grow coffee, others have minerals. So our communities are the hosts of these investments. So with the regulation of activities of these multinational companies under international human rights law, which is quite clear on the obligations and rights of the different parties, we believe we'll get that protection. And it's the same case with the people that work with them in the employment, the colleague in the morning explain the challenges in the labor sector, I won't go into it, but also those in the value and supply chains. This regulation will go a long way in ensuring that all those gaps are covered and the human rights abuses and also the protection of the environment is emphasized as the multinationals go about with doing their business. I will conclude by saying that the regulation of uh, activities of transnational companies in international human rights law is of great importance to us in the global south and particularly us at the African continent in the pursuit of corporate accountability. So despite having efforts to develop national action plans on business and human rights, we call upon all of you to join in the conversations informing the texts. There are things that are very important to us, especially the definitions, who is part of the family, our colleagues in the Global North know family as a nuclear family, and that's not the context for us. So we need to participate in these conversations to ensure that the diction or text used in the binding treaty is inclusive of our lived experiences as Africans, and then we'll be able to get the protection we need from that legal framework. Thank you so much. Action 8, a global federation working for a world free from poverty and injustice, has works that falls into four broad areas including women, politics and economics, land and climate, and emergencies. Its divisions work from the international level down to country office, curating local solutions on per need basis. I think this forum um, for Africans is extremely important because here 
we are going to be discussing why is it important to have ethics and business conduct among um, activities that take place in different communities, but also to understand uh, the context on how human rights violations happen uh, within transaction, uh, transactions of human rights uh, institutes. So basically we are saying that um, Corporations are operating in Africa and these activities that are happening within these communities are actually damaging human rights of certain communities. And we are saying that here uh, corporations need to be accountable for human rights violations that happen in those contexts. And what is happening is that we feel that um, there's a vacuum or there's an empty uh, regulation to hold these corporations accountable for these violations. So as Action Aid, we are working with different uh, movements, including the Feminist for Binding Treaty, to regulate or to adopt at an international level a legally binding instrument that will be able to hold corporations accountable for activities that happen within communities because most affected communities have no way to go and complain when this human rights violation happens. And obviously most of these transnational corporations do not have a legal jurisdiction in these countries and uh, it's, it's very difficult for them to, to take them to court. So when this happens, nobody is accountable and most of our governments are also not accountable so we feel that by working at an international level and having an international um, legal framework, our governments will be able to uh, domesticate these laws and will also be able to create platforms that communities now can take cases to court and corporations can be accountable. So having this uh, discussion around the UN guiding principles, it's a step, it's a complementary step, although developing uh, national plans on human rights are uh, voluntary um, procedures for many governments and we know that around Africa many governments have um, taken steps to develop their national plans but we know that uh, that is mainly voluntary. So what we are saying here that okay we are happy that the many governments are developing national plans but we would like to see more being done at an international level something that is legally binding and that governments are actually uh, making sure that corporations that operate within their countries are actually responsible and they redress any violations that happens with communities where these transnational activities are taking place. The Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement is uh, meant to promote trade between and amongst African states and to ensure um, increased economic productivity within the African continent. But of course, within this framework also lies the possibility of exploitation, the possibility of harassment of labor, and also the possibility of um, exploitation of labor within the context of work. So for we as civil society organizations, and as Action Aid in particular, we are advocating for um, legal frameworks to be passed that will regulate the activities of CSOs and also the activities of businesses in particular within the space of business. And we are also saying that it is not enough for governments governments to have the national action plans on business and human rights. We are calling for national action plans beyond the national action plans, but we are calling for the legal binding instrument on business and human rights. And we are asking that African states should take special interest in the ratification process and also importantly into the textual negotiation processes on the binding treaty. At this point in time, you realize that most of the exploitations, most of the ex uh, harassment of labor happens within the informal sector and to some extent also within the formal sector. But we do not have regulatory systems and monitoring systems in place that will ensure that businesses are not abusing the rights of our citizens. And therefore we are saying that there is the need for legal laws. There should be laws in place that will protect the vulnerable. There should be laws in place that will ensure compliance to due diligence processes. And importantly, we are also saying that states should ensure that corporations and other businesses take responsibilities in ensuring they respect the rights of communities and of the vulnerable in society. If we don't take a critical look at the legal binding instruments that is currently being negotiated, and this year we're going to be having the ninth session of the open-ended intergovernmental negotiations. And I want to take this opportunity to call on all African states. Let the African Union Commission take interest in the process. Let the African states take interest in the process. It is time for us to protect our environment. It is time for us to protect our citizens. It is time for us to guarantee the rights of women and children and the society as a whole, without which we will not be able to ensure we have a guaranteed future for our children, we have a guaranteed society, and we even in the same context 
of the climate um, justice that we are advocating for. This is the game changer to ensuring the protection of our environment, to ensuring that we are able to overcome climate, uh, um, um, uh, 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 to overcome climate injustice that is going on, and to ensure that richer nations are held accountable and richer nations pay for the damages that they do to communities. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, I have one request. Uh, uh, honoring our community, uh, they are here from all around from uh, Southern region, Hosanna. So I will do my briefing in Amharic because we are presenting their work here. So uh, please allow me to do that. Yao action and Gadi and the Mitawaga, Situs Lai, Atakro, Misara, specifically Situs Mapto Chachon, and it Maz and Dalabacho, Matayak and Dalabacho, Maskaber and Dalabacho, Misara, the Regis, no, mostly Mitawaka Bezano, Leluch Development, Good Governance, Yapis and Yum, Leluch Initiation of Binurutum. As you all know, Action Aid works on women's rights, specifically on how women should enforce and ask for their rights. It is mostly known for that, while also doing developmental, governance and peace initiatives. To start, when we say why women should control the economy, we base it on our intervention. That when a woman is strong in her economic standing, she can stand against violence, harassment and pressure from those close to her, including family. And that is why we focus on women's economic empowerment. <laughs> Yeah, economic empowerment When businesses enter the market, apart from the job opportunities they bring and the benefits for the country, they also have some drawbacks. I don't know if we can call them negatives, but they are challenges that come with the corporations. The first is, even on equal footing with their male counterparts, women in general have poor employment opportunities. In addition to that, there is a pay gap from the same work performed. They are doing the same job as their male co-workers, but they are paid less just because they are women. So the question is, what do we do to make these corporations accountable? Action Aid has been working for the past three years in combating modern slavery projects, implementing activities under the theme. The first one is self-assessment framework that pushes businesses to work on themselves. Having a list of criteria where businesses evaluate their environment to determine good business practices in enforcing co-workers' rights. <laughs> So soon uh, as I said, engagement touching women economic empowerment forum. The other we have been working on is the Women Economic Empowerment Forum. This national forum is laid by Ethiopia's Women and Social Affairs Ministry as its chair, while UN Women co chairs and Action Aid serves as a secretariat. Action Aid demo, uh, secretariat, you know, those are the progress we have so far. I want to say uh, the Call for our call for action. Yeah, uh, we want government to uh, ratify those two ILO conventions and each individual to fight for their rights and CSOs to continue their awareness creation work both on business sector and individuals. Thank you so much.